How's it going guys and welcome back to the False Tech YouTube channel. So um, this is going to be something like I've done in the past. This is going to be a mini series. I don't know how long this is, this is going to be. Um, probably just a few minutes but it covers something that's pretty cool and that I've already put to use in my in, in my work environment. Um, I'm going to be putting it to use in my home environment as well and uh, as you can see in the title we're going to be covering how to set up or install a Windows, or excuse me, a Linux subsystem on Windows. Alright guys, and before we install this, I want to go over a brief um, explanation of what this is. And it's not going to be anything in depth. Again, this is part of my mini-series. Um, if you want to see a longer series on this, let me know. I'll do that. Um, but to put it in simple terms, I, a Linux subsystem is basically you're enabling... When you go through and enable the feature, you're enabling the ability to install the kernel onto Windows. It's not necessarily a virtual machine on Windows, it just allows you to access the kernel that is living on Windows as well. So that's basically what it is. Um, if you want to go again in more detail, I can, but I'm going to jump right into installing this. So the first thing you want to do to uh, th get this set up is make sure you're up to date on Windows 10. Um, this is not a a relatively new feature but this is something that has came out in the past years so the first thing we want to do is turn the feature on um, so there are several ways you can do this I'm just gonna type turn Windows feature on and off I know I abort the, the spelling but if you type in turn Windows feature on and off that's the easiest way to get to it you can also access it from control panel we'll go ahead and open that up I have not turned it on on this computer I have turned it on on my work environment so once you're here, you're going to see a couple boxes. Um, you can enable quite a few things here. I have Hyper-V enabled, um, but the thing you're going to be wanting to look for, if we scroll down, keep going, you should see Windows Subsystem for Linux. So if you check this and click OK, it's going to start searching for files, applying the changes. It's basically installing that packet or enabling that so you can uh, get this set up. This will take a few minutes. Uh, depend on your network speed, so um, we're gonna let this roll, and I'll be back in a moment. All right, guys. So um, we are back. Yes, it is gonna require a restart. So I'm gonna restart this now, and I'll see you guys in a moment. All right. So the reboot has completed. Next step we're gonna do is open up Windows apps. So I'm gonna just search for apps, and you're gonna see Microsoft Store. Open up the Microsoft Store. If you're not signed in, you will need to sign in, and from here you can just type in uh, Linux. Here are the subsystems that you can install on your uh, Windows 10 machine. These are just Windows subsystems for Linux. You have Kali Linux, Ubuntu, Ubuntu 18, which is the latest. Um, well, there is 19 out as well, but um, that's not completely out just yet. You have uh, Arc Linux, Debian, and you also have Suzy Linux Enterprise Server. Um, so what I'm going to be doing, I already have Kali Linux on my Surface Pro. Uh, if you are interested in seeing that, you can click on the video above now. Um, but let's just jump into installing Ubuntu. So I'm going to click Ubuntu. You're going to choose Git. And then you're going to choose Install. And depending on internet speed, this will take some time. I am currently at a slow... Uh, I, I'm currently, I currently have a pretty slow connection. So, um... We'll give it a minute to pull this in, and I'll see you in a moment. All right, guys, so about uh, five minutes later, it has finished. It's, it probably won't take that long for you. Um, but once it's done, you'll hit this launch button, and then it's going to start installing the Ubuntu uh, subsystem. Uh, that was more of a download. This is the installation. And um, so we're going to let this roll, and I'll see you again in a few moments. All right, so once this loads, you can go ahead and create your new user. Um, root is already exists, so uh, don't try to create that. So I'm just going to do my user. I'm going to create a new password. So uh, let's see. Let's do one thing to note about this: when you type, it's not going to show you that you're typing, but it is. In, it's taking your input. It's just doing something. It's just basically doing like a security measure of not showing how many characters your password is. All right, so I'm going to retype it. And there we are. So um, I'm just going to do a sudo su and provide my password one more time. I am now root df h. This shows my file system, my mounts c d e and f. 
Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a apt get update. Now I am running slow internet, but uh, this will eventually install all the updates for me here. And uh, that that's pretty much it. Um, that's all there is to it. Just those few buttons and few clicks would get the uh, subsystem on your computer. A subsystem is command line only. So um, if you don't want to, if you want to do a graphic UI or GUI, you're going to need to do a virtual machine. As right now with this, you can only get the command line utilities. This will give you uh, access to doing to using Bash, SSH, even Git, and of course you can use the the normal apt to install packages. But guys, that's all the video I wanted to show you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. The, if you follow these steps, you'll be able to install any sub system that is on the Microsoft Store. And uh, from here, I can do just about anything I want. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye for now.